So the characters are all inventions. Um, even the lacuna that's in there is an invention. You know, even even when they're referenced, they are invented uh, avatars of, of these people. And um, so it, it, it demanded a lot of research just for the historical um, context of each story because the apartment takes place in a single apartment over time. So the first story is 1942, the last story is 2012. And it was important for me to put the historical context insofar as it animated the theme that began to emerge as I was writing of war, violence, displacement, because it is war and violence that creates displaced people and that creates the many waves of immigrants uh, and, and almost fugitives that end up in the apartment. And so the way that I worked was initially uh, initially, there were uh, there was a cast of hundreds and hundreds of characters because uh, it was set in contem all contemporary times and it was different people's stories in the same building. But as I wrote, it became clear to me that it needed to have a, this this, this timeline um, so that I could really explore the transient nature of Miami uh, and how that is tied to the constant wave of wars that happen uh, across the globe and how they manifest, um, you know, in our own little tiny building with its own tiny apartments. And I despaired a little bit because I'm not a historical novelist. I don't necessarily enjoy historical fiction. I, I admire it when it's done really well, but it's not something that I'm necessarily drawn to. I'm not... Uh, I like to write based on observation and um, curiosity, and I'm less interested in history per se as it relates to fiction. So all of those things I resisted for a long time, but it became clear that the story was really demanding it. And so what I did is that I wrote I wrote the stories, and then I decided when, when in history they were going to be set. And then the history was layered in through a lot, a lot of research, especially the earlier parts that I didn't live through, um, you know, World War II, for example. And I mean, I knew that Miami Beach was a big staging ground for the military, but I didn't have all the details. And in fact, a lot of people don't know that. And that historical memory has vanished because so many of those people have died. But Miami Beach was, in fact, you know, during World War II, a huge staging ground for a military. They requisitioned a bunch of buildings. That, that much is true. And they put their officers there. They trained. Uh, there There was the, the ship that was hit and that you could see from the shore that's in the book. Uh, that was a, a real thing. And so all of those I have to research. And... Um, you know, anybody who's done this kind of writing knows, I mean, I, my admiration for people who write historical novels only deepened because you do so much research for one sentence, um, for one detail. I, I, you know, what kinds of things would Sophie and her husband have in their house in 1942? I downloaded the Sears Roebuck catalog from the 40s. And uh, it's, it's like a thousand pages and just went through it all. Like what makes sense to put in here? And it takes two days to do this just for one, not even a sentence, just like one detail. So that took a long time. And then the Vietnam one uh, took a super long time because that there's people with living memory of that time. And I really didn't want to get that wrong. And so that took an enormous amount of research. I read a bunch of books um, and then I gave it to Mitchell Kaplan to read because he was there. He was at um, Flamingo Park uh, during these events. And I, I gave it to him to read before the book went to press and said, please, if there's anything wrong, you know, let me know. So, um, and if there is, it's not his fault. <laughs> but, he, you know, he said it was fine. Um, so, you know, the, that just took a lot of research. And then even the, the Eugenio piece, just to get a feeling of how he would have seen 
the great composer also took a lot of research. And that's where I discovered that Lepona had lived in exile, had lived not far from our house in Tampa, which was eerie. 